my dear friends, uh, coming to the topic of uh, taxonomy of the educational objectives. It is like, you know, teaching tables to a student who is doing PhD in math mathematics. Uh, most of you are already writing program outcomes. You're writing the course outcomes. You're doing not only the writing the course and program outcomes, but you are also mapping them and designing the program and are have already or inspiring to go for the NBA and other accreditation processes. So this is the, just like uh, that, that uh, you are already doing very high level of uh, applications of educational objectives, but then I will be talking very, very rudimentary. Now we are almost little more than four years old on the online mode also. Initially, there were some inhibitions. Uh, we were not familiar with this online interactions. But now I think uh, most of us are very, very comfortable on the online modes also. So uh, I would like to go wiser from this session by your inputs. And whatever little I know with my experience, I would like to share those things with all of you. So it is mutual win and win situation, uh, win win situation, and then we will learn from each other. Uh, my dear friends, uh, I want all of you to take a pledge with me that from this hour till about next hour and half, you are a seeker and I am also a seeker. I have the pen and paper, which I am already having. You must also have the pen and paper. And you are going to make notes and you are going to use them also later on in your respective personal and professional lives. And you come with the attitude to learn. We will go a little more deeper on teaching learning processes also in this session. I like to open my discussions with a few quotes first. And I want your inputs, right? Uh, you know, taking a journey through the slides also. Otherwise, it becomes very boring and it becomes, uh, you know, one way traffic monologue. I believe in a lot of noise in my classes. The highest education is that which does not merely give us information but makes our life in harmony with all existence by Ramindra Tagoraji. Isn't it so beautiful? Education is not to get the jobs, not to be only a good citizen of the country or of the, of the society, but it, it is the purpose of the education is to make our lives in harmony with the existence. I think only people like Ravindra Tagore could write this kind of a thing. It is so beautiful. And what is knowledge? Knowledge, uh, as per our uh, uh, teacher president, Dr. Sarup Radhakrishnan, knowledge gives us power, love gives us uh, fulfill, uh, fullness. L knowledge gives us power, love gives us full fullness. And imparting knowledge with love, imparting instructions, planning the instructions with love for your students, Imparting the instruction and evaluating the student with love, that is that will give you the fulfillment as a good teacher. And this is one of my very favorite quote by again Rabindana Tagore. Sir, uh, beautifully written, sir, being a self learning, a teacher can never truly teach unless he is self still learning himself. A lamp can never light another lamp unless it continues to burn its own flame. The teacher who has come to the end of his subject, who has no living traffic with his knowledge, but merely repeats his lesson to his students, can only load their minds. He cannot quicken them. And Rabindra Nath Tagore has said these, and the self-running is the key to success for a teacher. I think so, sir. Thank you very yeah, much. Dr. Ritu, thank you so much. ma'am? Sir, I am from uh, uh, Haryana, Dronacharya College of Engineering. Gurugram Haryana, sir. Okay, thank you so much, Ritu. Thank you. Uh, it is not a matter of only self-learning from any source. From any source, you can learn. And a teacher, teacher is the best learner. And giving you a pedagogical tip, you know, we learn so many things by seeing. We learn so many things by listening. We learn so many things by touch, by our five senses. And... You know, there is such study has been done 
wherein we have tried to find out how much we learn from by seeing by by looking at the things how much we can learn by listening how much we can learn by smell by by our ears by our touch by our you know different senses and it was found out by that research that maximum amount of learning takes place when you teach somebody that is why in the modern pedagogical concept they have realized that cooperative learning when the when you make your student to teach each other make the group small groups and then make them teach each other maximum amount of learning takes place and a teacher can never teach unless he is a learner by himself he he has to continuously continuously improve upon continuously it is a continuous process and if a teacher feel that mai ko to 38 years ho gaye i have now 40 years of experience i know i i don't require any more teaching he can only load the minds of the student he cannot make them you can you can means he cannot make them think and learn anything he can only load them the true teachers are those who help us think for ourselves irrigation and hydraulics we we it is a common subject for even in mathematics also people teach this the true teachers are those who help us think for ourselves if you are able to make your student think you have done a good job you have done a good job we will come down to that when i am going to come down to my um, presentations on the taxonomy and uh, this one is again one of my very favorite one by mark van doren uh, the art of teaching is the art of assisting discoveries the art of teaching is the art of assisting discovery uh, sudha ji uh, sudha ji is, you know i am when i am addressing one person i am addressing to the whole group here uh, the art of teaching is art of assisting discovery there are only two strategies there are only two strategies to impart instruction number one is expository when you, i expose the content to all of you expose i come to the class whatever has to be taught i i pass it on to all of the all of you maybe through my oral or through my uh, you know on the on the a white board or black board or on the transparencies this expo exposing the student to the contents other one is you do not expose the student to the content but make them discover the contents and the art of teaching mark van said is the art of assisting discovery you help the student to discover the content by themselves we will come down to i am i am i am using these quotes uh, when we will come down to the taxonomy also thank you so much sudha ji thank you sir and what is the role of the educator an educator is a sculptor of the world can you believe it you Art, all, of, yeah. all of you who are in the profession of teaching they are the sculptors of the world and on the teachers day which is on 5th of september we mane radha krishna ji ki ye quote bhi share kari thi he himself is a institute to study uh, whenever you get a opportunity you can read some of his uh, writings and uh, about his life you can study you know uh, on the teachers day i normally say on the stage that teaching is a profession which teaches all other professions teaching is a profession which teaches all other profession and i have written one poem on that if the time will permit i will share with all of you towards the end of this session if the time will permit of course uh, you know somebody is doctor somebody has taught somebody is engineer somebody has taught somebody is in the army somebody is a lawyer somebody is advocate somebody is in the finances teaching is a profession which teaches all other professions and our teaching learning process start from mother from the environment every everyone is teaching but then you are exclusively in this profession so never underestimate your profession my dear friends and uh, coming down to now this presentations uh, of the taxonomy of the educational objectives i will be talking to you about the purpose of education cognitive domain psychomotor domain affective domain which are the three main domains of educational objectives and principle and ways to improve teaching learning process and i will not go 
uh, no beyond this because uh, learning outcomes probably might have been covered by uh, my colleagues or experts from here so coming down to the purpose of education what do you think is the purpose of it now this question is open to all of you and i am not expecting and i am not giving you grading ki aapka answer theek hai ya galat hai kaisa hai kaisa nahi hai i am not here to judge you but then let us let us be very clear about it what is the purpose of the education yes what do you think anybody can unmute and say sir education is the most powerful weapon sir which can make and transformation in our home in our country in our society everywhere so i feel education is the most powerful weapon which can make a great transformation to the society and for our nation sir so you want to say say your name also ma'am please sir this is dr preetha representing kungunadu college of engineering and technology tamil nadu sir thank you so much ma'am wonderful uh, according to her the purpose of education to is to transform the society into a beautiful world and you know, to, to a beautiful society this is the purpose of the education yes uh, let me go little quickly over the very very rudiment things here uh, the purpose of education as it has been defined by most of the pedagogical philosophers and the researchers is to bring about a desirable change in the behavior of the learner a learner a student a child he has certain knowledge certain skills and certain attitudes you enhance his knowledge you enhance his skills and you modify his attitudes and his behavior changes in a desirable way in a desirable way today i am not able to design something so i say no i i, I cannot design this building i cannot design this element of a building but after having this knowledge and skills i say that my behavior is very different than okay uh, we will come down to a little more details about this it is brought about by using teaching teaching strategies and i mentioned there are only two strategies one is expository i expose everything in the class the second strategy is i make the student discover the content i do not teach i have everything in me but i do not teach in the class i give them the problem like situations and they discover and i assist them in their discovery teaching strategies methods like one method is which we are doing presently lecture method and interactions there can be tutorial method there can be seminar there are hundreds of method playing roles experiential learning there are so many method depending on your mastery depending on the type of contents you want to teach depending on the level of the students and depending on the level to which you want to raise the student you will select the method and also then there are individual tricks what we call tactics uh, which which help the teacher to grasp the attention of the students and to retain the attention of the student tactics are that you are able to grab the attention and to retain the attention of the student uh time is not permitting but in my next course i am going to cover this aspect very deeply uh because it is very difficult to get the attention of the student and to maintain the attention of the students towards the topic which you are teaching in the class and then there is a media media is everything around us is a media which is teaching us and uh, especially when it comes to the classroom media uh, it for example right now internet the digital media the powerpoints my speaking itself is a media you are listening is also a media and we are interaction you know everything is media and if you are able to make use of more than one sensory organ to learn things you learn more and more this is the role of the media okay and i am very tempted to share one small study with you uh, yes, sir, you. Please, yes sir please yes uh, sir please yes sir please please uh, share thank you so much atul ji the study says i i covered that in my presentation skills uh, session of the presentation skills uh, very deeply the study says that a normal human being for example you and me can render something like 150 to 225 words per minute main jab bol raha hu jo meri pace of speaking the words hai whatever the words i am rendering it is it varies from 150 to 225 if i am speaking very fast 
I can go to 22 to 25. For example, they were an actor in film industry was rendering very fast, and I have a tendency to speak very fast also. Normally, I ask my students to, to slow me down if I go a little faster. Uh, so 200 to 250, and one of the teachers, one of the excellent teachers told me, keep it 150. Let the student get chance to reflect back on what you have spoken. So 150 to 175 is a good speed. Coming down to the study again, a normal human being has a capacity to render 150 to 225 words per minute. But human mind can comprehend 450 to 500 words. 450 to 500 words, human mind can work on that. It has a capacity to analyze and to comprehend so much of things. There is a good gap of about 200 words between what you can speak and what your mind can comprehend. And in this gap, your student's mind will go somewhere. It will go somewhere. It has, it has to be occupied. My words are not enough. Your media, your PowerPoint, whatever you write, your, your postures and your gestures, your interactions, all those tactics and media help the student to get the attention so that their mind is not going because the mind cannot remain idle. It is It will go somewhere else if you are not occupying it through your uh, media. Okay, coming to the next one, teachers use these terms to describe various aspects of what the teachers will do in the teaching learning process and the, what the students will do. Both of them, they have to be active. We I give lectures on the active learning or active uh, communication, active listening nowadays, the students and teachers both have to be active in the class. In the discovery, the students are active. Now, this is a very classical definition or the purpose of education. So education is really the process of removing the ignorance that is covering the inner knowledge, which is absolute, perfect, eternal, and su supreme. So the purpose of this quote is key. Uh, the education extracts a lot of hidden things inside us. Ignorantly, we do not know what is inside us. When we uh, go through the classes and we find a lot of inside the students, he has this potential, he has this post potential. And we uncover that and uh, we extract and come up with something new where we come up with a lot of experimentation and discoveries in the past few years. We have observed that and that helps the society also. And education is a basic tool to is also to frame the society also. Thank you so much, Rajesh. I think uh, since you are from the Design Institute, which is so creative in its in itself, you could very closely go to the essence of this definition, which is given here. Education re is re is really the process of removing the ignorance that is covering the inner knowledge, which is absolute, perfect, eternal, and supreme. Why I have chosen this particular definition to share with you is that let me explain with a very simple corollary here. Uh, you know, every seed, seed samajhte hain, beej. Every seed, Rajesh ji ne bhi word use kara, potential. Every seed has a potential to become a tree. We are not putting the tree inside the seed. It is already there which is absolute, perfect, eternal, and supreme. Every, every knowledge, every skill is already there inside the student. Every seed has the potential to become a tree. The role of the farmer, the role of the gardener, the role of the teacher, all of us, is the role of the gardener farmer is to create a right kind of environment so that the seed can come out and give us the fruit, give us the flowers, give us the shade, give us the timber, give us the harmony in the life. That is the role. It is already there. It's already there. You have to only create a right environment. So stop from today itself. Stop telling that my students are very dull. No, they have that in them. Kisi mein kisi cheez ki jada hai. Somebody has is very good in something. Somebody says something good in something. Uh, you know some some every everybody has their own absolute perfect eternal supreme knowledge and knowledge here in the broader term is knowledge skills and attitudes
Now coming down to the taxonomy of the educational objectives, uh, Madam Minakshi will be mad with me that you are talking about what you are doing in the classroom. I am old and I am So you don't cover the topic which has been assigned to you. So let me come to uh, the taxonomy now. Taxonomy itself means what? What do you mean by taxonomy? Anyone? It means classification. Vasuji, thank you so much. Uh, taxonomy means classification. And imagine before this classification, it was very difficult to handle the large sizes of the classes which we are having now. This classification has transformed, has revolutionized the education systems itself. And my dear friends, I never fail to acknowledge that who has taught me the taxonomy of the educational objectives. I never fail to acknowledge that. You know, uh, when I joined this institute way back in 1985, we were given an induction by our senior teachers who had been trained on pedagogy by the experts like Benjamin Bloom himself. Benjamin Bloom is a person who gave the taxonomy of the educational objectives. Professor Dheer, Professor Krishnamurthy, Professor Malhotra, uh, you know, my seniors at that time when I joined this institute, in this very institute, they went to USA to learn this taxonomy and other pedagogical aspects. And I am very fortunate to be a direct student of those teachers who are direct students of Benjamin Bloom. I first of all like to convey my heartfelt thanks to Professor Rajamani, Professor Krishnamurti, Professor Dheer, and Professor Malhotra, who sometimes come to our institute sometimes. Professor Malhotra comes to us. Uh, Professor Dheer, unfortunately, is no more. And Professor Krishnamurti, who is from Tamil Nadu, he unfortunately is no more with us. And I am now having any details about Professor Rajamani. Anyway. Uh, at that time, Prasam Rotra, sometimes, you know, uh, I have a very close, intimate relationship uh, with Prasam Rotra because I learned a lot from him. Uh, you know, when we discuss certain things, uh, he would say that in my classrooms, I used to be a very troublesome student for Benjamin Bloom because he would always point out that sir, in taxonomy, in classification of the objectives, in this problem, in this problem. And over the period of time, they they they, they came out with the, some kind of standardization in this also. My dear students, my dear friends, I would say now, not students, you are, you are friends as well as students. The taxonomy of the educational objectives was developed in 1950s by Benjamin Bloom. Dr. Bloom's intent was to develop a classification framework for writing educational outcomes or objectives. At that time, the objectives itself contained the outcomes. A good objective is written in a form which today you understand as an outcome. But though there is a C difference between the objectives and the outcome as we take it today, but at that time, when Benjamin Bloom developed this thing, uh, the framework was to writing the educational objectives or the outcomes. Taxonomy is useful to plan, impart instructions, and also a tool to facilitate appropriate questioning, especially to the fresh teachers. Uh, I will share with you some my own personal examples on this, that uh, before understanding the taxonomy, I was setting up question papers after understanding the taxonomy very well from my teachers, uh, I wrote table of specification. This, this topic is not covering table of specifications, uh, but then uh, most of the teachers must know, or rather all the teachers must know how to write the table of specifications. Uh, my, my quality of the questions, the items which I wrote for, uh, for the question paper, they changed, they changed drastically. And my dear friends, uh, coming to the domains of learning, whenever a student come to any class at any level, whether he's a first year student or he's a second year student or he's a 10th student or he is going to class LKG, there are three things which we are trying to develop in the student. 
his domain of learning revolves around these three things. You are either developing his cognitive abilities, that is his intellectual capabilities. You are developing his intellectual capability. Brain, uske brain ki development kar rahe aap ya to. Or you are developing his psychomotor domain. His ability not only to think, create mentally, but able to do things by using your body. He should be able to do things, manipulate things. He should be able to execute. We do not require people only to uh, have intellectual capability, but we also require people who are able to execute, put it in a practical shape. That is known as psychomotor ability. You are, you are trying to develop his intellectual capability and also developing his body to able to do something. Why we call it psychomotor? Because our body works as a motor. And this motor runs by a driver. Then driver is our brain again, psyche. Our psyche gives commands to our body and our body then works. Internal as well as external. Externally, we think if I am going from here to somewhere, I will first of all think and give commands to my legs and my other body parts, then it will go. My internal systems, my respiratory system, my digestive system, my neuro system, you know, all the systems, they are governed by the psyche. A person who, who, whose brain is badly affected, his body doesn't function. Yes? His body doesn't function, though his body is all right. But then the car is car is there, but the, without driver, the car will not go. You require a driver to drive the car. And nowadays we have driverless car, but in that your microchips are the drivers. They they you're putting a brain in them, and then they, it works with that. Okay, and uh, we are developing the intellectual capabilities, their abilities to do the things, and we also develop their attitudes and feelings affective the mean the word affective has come from affection the feelings the attitudes your car is there the driver is there but the driver is not willing to drive or he is not willing to drive safely or he is not making you comfortable when he is driving you know these are the attitudes so so you are driving and you know how to drive and you are driving it in a safe way, making your passenger comfortable while he's taking the ride in the vehicle. So this is about you in any class, whether it's a nursery class or it's a 10th class, you're developing his brain. It, the proportion of the development, whether it's a, you're developing, focusing more on the cognitive abilities or you're focusing more on the psychomotor abilities or you're focusing more on the effective domain or simultaneously how much proportion may vary from the program to program, from, from one program to the another program. Yes, uh, we have ITI students, we have diploma students, we have degree students, we have uh, undergraduate, but we call it degree students. And then we have postgraduate or PhDs or postdoctorals. Uh, there are different programs with different aims and objectives. And accordingly, uh, depending on the expected learning outcome, we will design the program for developing these three things. But these are the three things. And my dear friends, a well, all rounded and fully functioning person needs to develop all three things. A well, all rounded and fully functional person need to have good mind, good body skills, motor skills, and also good attitudes and feelings. This is a very broad domains of learning. Now, why we require to have classification? Why we require to have a classification? Before I go to the taxonomy, we will go one by one. Cognitive, how you cognize, place the things in your mind intellectually. I will not repeat psychomotor and affective domain. Why there is a need to classify? Why do we why, why do we need to classify? What would happen if we do not classify? And what would happen? What is happening when we have classified the things? Uh, sir, excuse me. In my opinion, we have to classify so that we can choose the correct medium of instruction and delivery to the student. Plan, plan also, sir. 
plan plan do assess the body inspection to that level and and also then to evaluate the student to that level yes why why should we go for the level of uh, students we can judge on the particular topic that is uh, is uh, easily to understandable by them or we need that more creativity or evaluation is needed on this so we can had an uh, we can say a difference among the topics or the knowledge which has been given to the students sir. okay thank you so much ma'am and somebody else let us try to go a little more brainstorming on this sir we will uh, do that it yes so that in an information regarding in what level how depth the topic has to be imparted to the students but why why we require that uh the medium uh, the way in which we are just teaching that particular topic okay uh, can you give some example maybe you want to explain your point of view by example any one of you can take example and explain sir uh, if i am just going to be a physics teacher suppose i just want to tell about heat transfer if i'm just going to give the information alone it comes under cognitive domain but if i'm just doing an experiment and explaining the students then it comes under psychomotor and if the students we are i'm giving some experiments and they themselves doing and they are uh, finding out something very new then they it comes under affective domain so okay. in what way i should be teaching a particular topic that could be given by uh, this particular content sir okay thank you so much sudha ji and anybody else like to say something on this now sir taxonomy is required because we have lot of diversity in the world to sync with the different uh, uh, things together the taxonomy helps in uh, to uh, connect with each other and we come up with the results uh, accordingly okay uh, suppose rajesh you have said very rightly somebody has raised the hand yes please uh, pavandeep kaur ji it helps in organizing yes pavandeep ji yes it definitely helps you in organizing suppose you go to a library and there are 20000 books and you want to search a book and there is no classification there is no cataloging the books are piled up everywhere yes how would you find the book you will have to go each and every book you may find it on the second take or you may find after 20th other books finding other books yes or no yes yes so your society your potential employers are looking for certain profiles to 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 be employed or your society is requiring some kind of people and the potential employer is part of the society again i am repeating again and they are looking for some kind of knowledge some kind of a skill set some kind of a knowledge set intellectual capability some kind of uh, uh, you know their attitudes and in the absence of in the absence of this classification he will find or she will find it very difficult you are trying to create certain profiles in diplomas in 3 years in degrees undergraduate programs in 4 years or in you know at different levels which are in demand that demand is the person who is going to the library and you classified them very well okay look here here is my person who has this kind of intellectual capability he has this kind of psychomotor abilities and he is having this kind of attitude uh, are you a taker for this are you looking for this book you will go to that shelf go to that number and get it this will save it is a win win situation the book 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 is also feeling good that is it's being read <laughs> uh, and the, and you are also feeling good that you are getting the book yes the which the books the the contents of which you are looking for ma'am has very rightly said it to helps you in organizing in organizing let me share one more example here we say that so and so person let us say a person is very intelligent his mind is very sharp the b person is his 
intellectual capability is at a higher level than A. And then there is a C person whose intellectual capability, I'm talking about only cognitive domains, psychomotor and, domain, and other domains, can we see any example? Eh? Uh, his capability, that C person has higher than the B. Then the D person is higher than the C. How do I know what kind of intellectual capability the D person has? I will have to first of all see the A, B, C, and then I say, okay, okay, the D person is having higher than these three persons. Yes or no? It becomes a very complex thing. It becomes a very, very complex and almost, almost impossible to name. You know, in a class, if we have the names, the teacher can call us by a name and then I can raise my hand and I can do this thing and that thing. If we, if we do not have the names, how the teacher is going to address? Bloom has classified and given names to different levels of competencies, especially in the area of intellectual capability. And then there were other educationists, Grunlert and many other people, we will harrow many other people who classified the educational objectives gave the taxonomy in the psychomotor and affective domains. It is very much essential to plan, to execute a program, to plan a program, execute a program, and to evaluate whether I am able to have those competencies in the student in terms of knowledge, skills, and attitudes. Cognitive domain, as I mentioned, deals with the intellectual and thinking skills thinking skills or thinking abilities. This includes from recognition to the creativity. We will come down to that. First of all, let us go a little faster now on the taxonomy of the cognitive domain. At now, let us, we have, we are three domains, uh, cognitive, psychomotor and effective. We go one by one. First of all, let us focus on the intellectual capability, cognitive domain. Uh, the first level, the lowest level is knowledge. Bloom has called it knowledge level. When the student is able to rec recognize and recall information. He is able to recognize and recall information. Uh, for example, you know, when children are very, very young, those who are young parents here or you, those who have nephews and nieces around them, you know, you tell them this is nose. He is able to recall and say, and you can ask him, nose kahan pe hai? where is your nose? He will say. He is able to recall. His knowledge, his intellectual capability is to the level of knowledge. He is able to recall. If a student come and he is able to recall whatever has been given to him. That is the basically knowledge. He is able to recognize and recall the information. The second level in intellectual capability is comprehension. He is able to mentally arrange the information and understands also. He understands also. And since all of you or most of you know the taxonomy very well, knowledge and comprehension, uh, and higher levels also. We will come down to that. We can go for the computer network, sir. If we mm. have a thing, uh, recall compute networks. So it mm. it goes with the knowledge, sir. If a question is being asked, right, recall computer networks or network, it go with the knowledge, sir. If at the comprehension level, uh, state the computer networks and uh, show how the OSA model will be organized, it can go with the comprehension level, I think, sir. Preetha, okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, since I do not know about the much about the computer, but I you I it seems to be very very close. Let me give you an example and uh, explain the concept to you, which is a very very common example. I'll take very very uh, you know simple example which everybody will understand. I'm not saying that uh, you know you are saying wrong or anybody is saying wrong here. Uh, I am not here to make a judgment, but I want to have a complete understanding about the taxonomy. That's the only purpose. You know, a small child, when he learns a rhyme in the school, you understand the rhymes? Jack and Jill went up the hill. Tinkle, tinkle, little star. 
you know we all learned <laughs> all those rhymes yes sir and the student the small child comes home and he is able to recite those rhymes but does he understand the meaning of those rhymes no sir so when the student much later understand the vocabulary and he grows is in his intellectual capability he understand the meaning of those rhymes also yes yes sir i can give the same example now yes ma'am actually yesterday in one of the movie my son was watching uh, uh, london bridge is falling down <laughs> then yeah. saying like uh, i don't know who has uh, demonstrated with uh, such a negative attitude so now he is able to comprehend yeah uh, you know it takes a lot of time we may know we may reproduce i, I can define such many things but if i really understand that definition if i understand that relationships very well i may i may give a formula to you you may mug up and you may produce it on the answer sheet also but if you understand the meaning of that principle that formula that those those concepts very well it is a higher level intellectual capability yes we go further now the next level of higher uh, uh, intellectual capabilities he the student at this level not only knows not only comprehends but he is able to apply that knowledge in different situations a question that asks a student to apply previously learned information jo uske paas abhi tak information thi knowledge thi usko understanding bhi hogi now he is able to apply that he is able to apply that i can give you one example because time is not permitting me the end we have so much to cover in this session and dr manakshi knows ki mere session kabhi bhi 1.5 ghante mein khatam nahi hote i mean i don't finish my <laughs> the whole agenda but i have no intention to cover everything but whatever little we cover we uh, we cover it very deeply and understanding application the student has learned something and he understand something for example as a civil engineer i was given the information that if you multiply length with the breadth you get a area yes and i have a tile a tile which has to be put on a floor or maybe on a wall i have the length and the breadth i can get the area and also if i am asked how many tiles i will require on this floor i need to calculate the floor area and divide that and i have not done anything big all those things which i have learned in my lkg class ukg class those those addition subtraction multiplication and division i have applied that i have understood that and i now in a situation i am able to apply if i go to the market to buy pencils and the and the shopkeeper says that you will get 10 pencils for rupees 20 and i give him 100 rupees note and i demand 80 rupees back from him i have applied the simple division multiplication subtraction addition mathematics is nothing but only these four things my wife is a, a gold medalist in mathematics and she is phd in that and she says that mathematics is nothing it is only subtraction addition division and multiplication you have to only know how to apply that and uh, i hope i am able to make you understand you are able to not only apply uh, comprehend but you are able to apply that now as ma'am mentioned in different situations also yes so this is a higher level intellectual capability you not only understand but you are able to apply you develop mental skills to apply that in different situations and the higher level than the application is analysis in many situations there is a direct applications and in many situations who knows better than the engineers you have to analyze the situation first and then apply you have to analyze and then apply and to analyze the situation you require higher order of intellectual skills you require you can discriminately 
choose a option out of so many options and apply it. Am I getting close to what I'm trying to say? Is, are you getting this point? A higher order question that requires students to think critically and in depth and then apply because he knows how to apply already. It is requires a higher level. You know, when, when I was doing my BTEC, we were uh, BTEC in civil engineering from Thapar Engineering College and later on masters from Punjab Engineering College. Uh, we were having a subject on steel structures design and there were only four questions asked and we were having we were given four hours one question one hour uh, of course uh, at that time uh, calculators were allowed to us and we were allowed to take the codes with us in the classroom and then attempt the questions and even if the answer our structure comes failure structure we were given full marks because we followed we analyzed the loads and we could we were able to apply the knowledge in a situation since the time was only one hour uh, i can now my teacher is now sure that by applying that all everything by analyzing everything he is able to apply and he can make the structure right in the field when he will go he will be able to do that because there is no examination time limit there so you are able to and in many situations you have to analyze the situation go from one level to the another level their intellectual capability we are talking about only cognitive domain up to now the different levels the different levels of intellectual capability he is more intellectually capable he's more now this more and more from a b c d bloom has given name knowledge comprehension application and analysis and he has not stopped there he has gone to the level of synthesis a higher order question that asks the student to perform original and creative thinking. By synthesizing everything, he is able to give you a unique design. He can give you a unique creative design. Uh, those, any one of you is civil engineer here in the group who is attending the program? I'm yes, sir, 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 sir. <laughs> okay, okay. So you will be able to understand better, but then everybody else should also be able to understand better. Suppose you, I, I have to design one element of a building. May it be foundation, may it be column, may it be beam, may it be slab, any, any one element of the building. And I give certain parameters and certain load conditions. In then if there are 20 students, will the design given by 20 student be same always no sir no, no sir it may not be same everybody has their own syntax their own so the, at a level of synthesis the student is able to give uh, if that was the case we would have been long been buried in the graves by the computers now there's there is a stat pro and there are so every in every field you know in the medicine field in every field there are there are there are software is available, doctor software, homeopathy, ke, allopathy, ke, Ayurvedic, ke, you know, everything is available. But then very discreetly, depending on the situation, you synthesize every knowledge and in a, in a very creative way, you do it. Yes. These slides are also available. This is much more than what I'm putting up in, in this slide is available on the Google. But how you are presenting it, your synthesis. And then the last, the highest stage, Benjamin Bloom has given of the intellectual capabilities, judging the value of the material. Judging the value of the material. If you want to remember it, we have an acronym CAS. K C A A S C. If you remember this, you will be able to understand knowledge, comprehension, applications, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. Judging the material. Here it means. But Benjamin Bloom wanted to say, if you go a little more deeply in the taxonomy, at this level, you are not only able to know, understand, apply, analyze, create, but you are able to make a judgment on the knowledge itself. Many people, uh, you know, uh, have a different understanding about this. But as I understand about the stage of evaluation, uh, he is able to challenge that. For example, in engineering, 
we have certain principles, certain equations. Yes, gravity ki equation, hai, friction ki equation, hai, you know, so many equations. And I did my master's in hydraulics. We are having only equations and equations only there. And uh, somebody who is from heat transfer and bond, uh, you know, uh, mass mass transfer and sebi uh, uh, either hai, abhi, uh, somebody was telling me that he's from heat transfer and because part of the hydraulics fluid mechanics ka part hai, mechanical. Mein. Uh, every equation, every equation holds good under certain boundary conditions. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Every equation holds good under certain boundary condition. Now, at the stage of intellectual capability of the student is at the stage of evaluation, he says, you give him the equation. For him, the equation of gravity is very good. But at some stage, he will say this equation of gravity is not absolute. In such certain boundary conditions, it will fail. Now he is making a judgment on the knowledge which he has gained in class 7th or 8th. And he's been using it and applying it and solving many problems. But at a one stage, when he is doing research at a PhD level or MTech level or postdoctoral level, he make a judgment on the material which has been given to you, given to him. And he put up a hypothesis that this hold goods only in this and under those are different uh, boundary conditions, the different conditions, this may happen, this may not happen, this may happen. This is how we are evolving. We are evolving and we are doing research even in the case of mathematics, even in the case of physics, in the basic sciences, basic languages may. Shakespeare wouldn't have written like this if this was not there. You know, in the languages, in the sciences and art, everywhere, the, the new research is taking place because the student has surpassed the stage of creativity. He has gone to the stage of evaluation. Any questions up to now? I have set up good terminology. I'm not sure about whether it is relevant here. Uh, in the information technology, they use the terms uh, data information, knowledge, experience, expertise, wisdom uh, seems to be tallying with this uh, six set of terms. Uh, that's my best I remember those terms. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can. It's very easy. I, I remember it by CAS, <laughs> uh, these terminologies, by first letter of each level. Anyway, uh, my dear friends, if you understand this very well, uh, let us go a little more deeply into the cognitive domain. Knowledge, remembering, recalling, previously learned information. And when we plan or when we impart instruction or when we evaluate, I will not go in the how to write the course of outcomes or learning outcomes for the course or for a program. But then we require action words. What the student should be able to do when he is at the level of knowledge. He will be able to define, he will be able to describe, he will be able to enumerate, he will be able to identify, he will be able to label. You know, these are the action words. And this is not exhaustive list. I have taken some of them. And these are not absolute. Certain action verbs mentioned at knowledge may appear in the comprehension level and application level also, depending upon the context in which it is being used. But generally speaking, these are the action verbs. If you are talking the intellectual capability this going to the level of knowledge. Sir. And yes, sir. Uh, I'm Dr. Ravi from Tamil Francis Engineering College. Jesus. Sir, I actually remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create the terms that we are using for Bloom's taxonomy. But you are putting the knowledge, there is no term related here. I am, I, am trying to, I am trying to give you the taxonomy, complete taxonomy, depending on your program which you are offering. You have to see that profile of the student when they pass out from my institute as a B.Tech or as a diploma holder or a M.Tech up to what level of intellectual capabilities I need to develop and use this kind of things. Okay. Sir, what, what I am telling is 
there is a fixed terms in the bloom's taxonomy as well as the revised bloom's taxonomy levels that terms are remember understand apply analyze evaluate and create we followed our institution these terms but uh, these knowledge term is not be the yeah uh, i will come down to that Rav uh, mr ravi ji uh, just wait on hold on for that sometime okay okay Uh, at the level of comprehension, when he is able to understand the meaning, and these are the terms which will define the level of the student when he is able to comprehend. Okay, and similarly, at the application level, these are the action verbs. You can have I I did this exercise long back, long back means maybe more than fifteen years back, and God, when I was writing not course outcome or program outcome, but I was writing the objectives. we held the workshops of many teachers at different levels uh, diploma level teachers degree level teachers teachers who were doing uh, university level teachers who were doing a lot of research and we came down to this kind of a uh, at different levels i mean not only for the engineering but also for the sciences also for the art also for the uh, uh, commerce law every, uh, many a heterogeneous group of teachers they give different kind of uh, Uh, action verbs which define the level of the student at a particular intellectual capability and at the cognitive domain in the analysis level these are the action verbs which define the student that he is able to now analyze he is able to break down correlate diagrams differentiate discriminate distinguishes focuses he when he is able you have to use this kind of a terminology to write the program outcomes if you want to raise the level of the student to the level of analysis and this is the level you talk about uh, for the synthesis these are the action verbs many times when we ask the teachers to write the uh, program outcomes or the course outcomes they find it very difficult to find a appropriate verb which define that level for which they are designing the program and nowadays uh, in the national credit framework this is very very important for all of us to understand them very well at the evaluation level these are the action verbs which define the students abilities we plan and we execute and we evaluate the student depending upon the uh, things and uh, these are the examples of the levels and action verbs in the cognitive domain as per the new version of bloom's taxonomy my friend was talking about i talked about the bloom's bloom's taxonomy one of the bloom's student himself andrew he revised the action he revised the different levels of cognitive level and from he didn't do much thing but he only conveniently applicable he changed the nouns to the verbs for example revised taxonomy in 1990s lorin anderson one of the former students of bloom revised the taxonomy named six major categories from noun to verbs what mr ravi was talking about just now and this is what he did from knowledge he started calling it remembering comprehension understanding application applying and one more thing he changed the nouns to verbs and one more thing he thought andrew andrew he has he has his own taxonomy which is being followed by many universities but many universities still like to follow the original bloom's taxonomy and i am a strong advocate of that but anyway many universities i am not against the second revised taxonomy also uh, he said that evaluating is below the creative creativity is the highest one what what he thought bloom's re revised from starting from remembering understanding applying analyzing evaluating and then <laughs> this was a passing reference uh, this is a revised taxonomy and some of you might be getting confused because of the taxonomy which i shared with you but then there is a revised taxonomy and many universities has adopted because it is easier to apply that in the in a context now psychomotor domain as i mentioned is doing the things instruction objectives and uh, and derived questions tasks typically have cognitive 
and effective elements but the focus is on developing the motor skills the psychomotor domain includes physical movement coordination and use of motor areas motor skill areas your body was like different uh, parts of the body development of these skills require practice and measured in terms of speed precision distance progress of course procedures and techniques uh, some of the typical examples are writing i'll come down to these examples little, little later okay let us let us try to uh, understand uh, benjamin bloom didn't give the taxonomy for the psychomotor domain it was simpson grunler dave and many other people uh, hero for example and many of the scientists uh, the scientists in pedagogy the philosophers in pedagogy they put forth this taxonomy they said as in case of uh, intellectual capability it started from knowledge then comprehension then application and then analysis and other things they said your psychomotor domain your ability to do things start with your imitation you do a thing and student repeats that learner repeat an act that has been demonstrated or explained it it includes it hit and trial you error and trial and error methods say wo kuch karne ki koshish karte hain which has been demonstrated to them they try to imitate a small child try to imitate his parents his students physically physically speaking you say something the whole communication skill the whole art of speaking is by imitation by hit and trial who oh, oh, he cannot speak many things but then by hit and trial he will go to the le highest level but he starts with imitation then the second level under psychomotor domain is manipulation learner continues to practice a skill or a sequence becomes habitual and task can be performed with some level of confidence we write digits one by making a vertical straight line and we call it one two is very complicated three is also complicated any drawing we make and we call it one any drawing we make we call it two any drawing we make we call it three we fix it now this drawing is called one this drawing is called two in some other language something else is two something else is three something else is seven yes or no yes sir now coming to the simplest drawing i am you can you can you can apply it in any situation the simplest drawing one a small child who is learning how to hold the pencil who is physical activity hai na pencil ko aise pakad ke seedha leke jana hai the mothers mothers or fathers jinke bacche chote hai they will understand it very well ki aap uska hath you hold his hand and then make him to make a small he is not able to do that then you divide that activity divide that activity of drawing a straight vertical line into small part you put dots you put dots on the notebook and then you say join the dot and you hold the hand and slowly slowly in the first one imitation he is able to do this 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 small small dots at the level of manipulation now he knows ke from one dot to another dot to third dot to fourth dot now he can make but he still is not very sure what he is making but he is able to somehow make a vertical line which looks like a vertical line which is not exactly a vertical line he is able to manipulate by himself when you are not there when the dots are also not there but he is still not very sure whether the line is vertical or not he can very clearly see that the line which you have drawn is different than the line which he has drawn and you can you now you can uh, you know you can spread this example to letter 3 4 5 a b c or or any any kind of uh, you know activity now you will be understanding a little more i'll give you more examples the third level of psychomotor ability is precision now exactly he makes a vertical line and he knows 
with a lot of practice, he knows. Now we do, we don't require that. We don't require to think about it. our psyche doesn't work. We, we work on the reflex action, which is the highest form of psychomotor domain. You are able to draw a line precisely. You are able to make a measurement and precisely tell this is the length of the room. Initially, you are not able to do that. Initially, you are not able to do that. When you are learning how to drive a car, you are dividing the different operations of the car into different things. And then by manipulation, you are able to somehow pull the car. But at the level of precisions, you know how much of the race has to be clutched, how much the clutch has to be pressed, how much of the brake and how much of the turn has to be pressed. Initially, you are making a lot of turn. Initially, you are making a lot of so at the precision level, you are able to make the exact things. Are you getting my point, sir? Ma'am? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, I am Dr. Ravi Doubt, sir. Yes. Sir, but in that university and our in uh, question setting, only we followed uh, uh, the Bloom's taxonomy, not this uh, uh, psychomotor domain taxonomy. Why? That's the unfortunate part. That is very unfortunate that if you are focusing only on the theory, theory and giving no emphasis on the practicals, that is why the industry says that your, your students are very good in the bookish knowledge, but then it, when it comes to practical, they are not able to do anything. They are not able so to the do anything. Also, you have to give so these. Uh, uh, the psychomotor, psychomotor, then no questions has to be asked. They have to be asked to perform. They have to be. I, I don't ask. I can give you. I can give a very beautiful explanation of how to drive a car, but actually driving a car is different than driving, right? Writing a, a procedure for right, driving a car. That is a problem. That is a problem area. Okay. No. Let us go a little more uh, quickly now because the time is not permitting me but i think you go, got the answer i can give you a very beautiful right write up on how to swim but actually swimming in the water is different than writing a essay on swimming we are focusing only on the essays procedures but in life we have to actually swim we have to actually drive we have to actually perform yes or no sir here also verbs are pizza. Every, every level certain verbs, uh, words are pizza. Apply mm -hmm. it and uh, apply means a set of uh, keywords. Here also. Uh, yes, there are. There are. I will. I will show you. I will show you that. Okay. okay. The the precision level is the le when he is exactly able to do that. And these educationists not only stopped at the precision level, but they went to the level of articulation. A higher level than the precision articulation is according to the situation the student the learner is able to synthesize he is able to uh, make use of his body parts according to the situation which is arising for example i might have learned driving using a particular car on a particular uh, roads and i know how to stop how to go this thing but in a traffic situation, I have to go beyond precision. In a football match, I'm talking about a football game, okay? In a football match, every player know how to push the ball. Every player know how to take the pass and give the pass. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if that was the case, if that was the case, everybody is an Olympian. Everybody is an Olympian. What is the difference between, you know, the highest level of strikers is that they are able to articulate. They go beyond taking and giving the pass. They go beyond the level of taking and giving the pass. A good driver, a good driver is goes beyond clutch, race, uh, brakes, steering, he goes, he is able to manipulate, he is able to, he is able to manipulate to the level of articulation to be able to maneuver his car in the traffic conditions. Yes, 
I hope I am able to explain the level of articulation. Yes, sir. Okay. And there is a level higher than the articulation that is naturalization. When the students, the learner is able to execute, able to do a thing without psyche. Psychomotor may psyche ko usne khatam kar diya. For example, I give you example of writing the letter one, the digit one. Now you don't use that. The, there are so many things. When we walk, when I when I am like I am sitting here, when I want to stand, do I do do I really require a lot of mind to but to put my weight on the two legs and but imagine a small child requires a lot of psyche, how to balance the psyche, bicycle, so many things which we do every day, they come naturally to us. The mason is able to do the masonry by naturalization. I cannot do even after passing through a four-year degree program in civil engineering because he, his skills are higher than me. But his intellectual capability to design a building and to reduce the cost of the structure may not be that much. That is a difference. A, a certificate course, ITI course, has highest level of skills but little lower level. They go to the level of comprehension and to the level of knowledge. A polytechnic goes to the level of application. A degree program goes to the level of synthesis. A master's program goes to the level of evaluation. Here, in the psychomotor domain, it is a reverse. It is a reverse. Usually, it is a reverse. And my dear friends, uh, uh, this is the you know uh, action verbs which uh, Ravi sir was asking for. At the imitation level, they should be able to copy, they, they are able to begin, they are able to assemble, they are able to attempt, they are able to carry out, they are able to calibrate. Similarly, at the level of manipulation, there are the verbs, there are precision level, there are verbs, there are articles, there are verbs, and naturalization, there are verbs. And I, as I mentioned, there are overlapping of verbs in different levels. It, depending on the context, you will use the verb. Because I did this workshop long back, and then there are so many people from different areas. Who a meaning, and the word, the, the the meaning of the word depends on the situation which they apply. And effective domain. If you give me five more minutes, I can explain you this also. Effective domain. It refers to the beliefs, systems of attitudes, opinions, appreciation, ethics, values, and emotions. My dear friends, uh, taxonomy for the effective domain. It starts with the receiving. The student passively attends to a particular phenomenon or a stimuli. He is receiving what you want to say. You know, I, I say that honesty. I say punctuality. I say discipline. I say so and so, so and so. He is a receiver. He is a passive receiver at the first level. At the second level, at a higher level, he starts responding. He actively participates in that. I say tomorrow we will meet exactly at this time. He is exactly there at that time. He start responding to it. He start in, initially he's only receiving, but then slowly and slowly at, as his uh, uh, level of effective domain increases, he is able to respond. And the third level is value. This is a very crucial level, very, very crucial level, my dear friends. At the level of valuing, how much value you are attaching to a particular attitude. For example, a classical example comes to my mind. I am not opening this house for the discussion because time is not permitting me to do so. At, the, at a, uh, you know, uh, I say in my class, punctuality, for example. And the students start responding and he start coming to the class in time. And I myself am not, I'm not in time. Okay. I am also in time in teach as a teacher. But many students he see that they are enjoying in the canteen, they are enjoying in the play field, and they come late in the class. There is a you know conflict going on in his mind. He's, he thinks that those they are having more fun than me. And he start valuing how much importance I should give to the time, how much importance I should give to the honesty. Professor Sabne ka honesty. 
but he sees in the society there are many dishonest people who are flourishing they have bigger houses bigger cars big this he start attaching his own value to a value which you want to teach a worth a student attached to a particular object phenomena or a behavior so this is the this is the start valuing the things also at the next higher level of effective domain he not only values but he is able to organize now it is a level of synthesis it is a level of organization uh, when there are different values which are seemingly conflicting each other he is able to take a decision and stick to the values which he has formulated for himself or herself whatever may happen everybody may be late but i won't be late that is the synthesis that is the organization there is there is never a conflict between the values it is a seeming conflict and you are able to resolve that if you are able to resolve that you are at a higher level than the value you are able to at the level of organization for example i give you a very quick example on this for example i am coming from home to my office and on the way i find somebody has met with accident my one value says i should be reaching my office in time yes punctuality another value says that somebody is bleeding compassion should be there i should be taking him or her to the hospital if he i let, let him be bleeding he may not be there tomorrow now these two value seemingly conflict with each other should i reach my office in time or should i take care of this person now at the level of organization the person may take him to the hospital and compensate the time which he has taken from the office in the evening or there may be any other many 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 ways we do not want i i do not have time to go in the otherwise i give you so many situations and ask you to organize the conflict between the values the conflict between the office and the home especially for the women today's women find this conflicts happening every day in the office every day in the home men are also finding lot many conflicts when you are able to resolve the conflicts you are at the level of organization and the last highest level is the level of characterization when you have gone beyond those levels of you though though all those values become a part of your character a part of your own character if you want to ask somebody on a particular thing go to so and so for example if i want to know the truth about a thing i go to my father because he never tells lie if i want to know about this i go to my son because i know that he will tell me the right thing because that has become a character you are building characters in the institute as i mentioned in the cognitive domain in the psychomotor domain depending on the level of the program you are deciding how much of the theory how much of the practical how, up to what level but i say at the level of taxonomy for the effective domain raise the level of your student to the level of characterization starting with the receiving how do you as i mentioned in the beginning how do you improve the teaching learning process by following the best practices focused on measurable students learning outcome given him the situation and how he responds to that i give you the basic principles of teaching learning process for cognitive domain for psychomotor domain as well as for the effective domain in next 5 minutes what is the basic principle to develop a cognitive ability in the student yes very quickly answer from you what is the basic principle you want to develop the cognitive ability in the student what is the basic principle there is only one principle what is that principle anybody uska probably would give them freedom sir okay somebody else freedom to make them to think sir you got it ma'am make the student to think if you do the thinking all the time in the class and solve the problems on the blackboard students cognitive abilities will not make the student think this is the basic principle you want to develop the psychomotor abilities student what are the basic principles you are yes. you are in applied labs 
okay somebody the else concept of uh, theoretical into applied in the lab okay how do you do that somebody else basic principle practical knowledge on the domain sir okay i'll give you two principles and i have never failed to get the third principle from my students like all of you uh, for for me all of you are my students at the moment the first principle is you want to develop the psychomotor ability practice the second principle is practice what is the third principle yes practice practice you got it <laughs> <laughs> there is no shortcut to practice practice and more practice if you want to develop a psychomotor ability and give them the feedback when while they are practicing what is the basic principle of developing the effective domain think Now, positive all the uh, situations sir okay somebody else uh, sir if i am not wrong i, I have small uh, opinion create a small confusion uh, so that they can assess themselves okay teach ethics and moral values teaching se kaam nahi chalega you have to play the role if i want my son not to smoke and i smoke in the drawing room no no if i come late in my class and expect my student to come in class in time no 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 if i am dishonest and i'm expecting everybody has to be honest <laughs> knowingly or unknowingly wittingly or unwittingly whether you like it or no you are the role models for your student for a very long time when they are in the colleges you have to display you have to play that role for your for the students demonstrate it by burning yourself any value you want to teach you have to execute in your own life first you have to put it in your own life khali upadesh dene se nahi you have to walk the talk and then give them as madam mentioned uh, one of the ma'am mentioned reflective assignments such as journaling and group discussions my dear friends uh, there are so many things which i try to cover under the bloom's taxonomy first of all the purpose of education domains of learning and then different levels of proficiency capability which the student need to develop in different programs for developing their cognitive psychomotor and affective domains any questions in your mind any comments from your side how do you find i mean the questions you always give level not the domain is not mentioned in that uh, in some of the question you have to so, mention the domain also yeah they should mention the domain yes domain as well as uh, the level yes this is the problem that is why this kind of programs are being given by dr menakshi and the institute like us that we focus only in developing the intellectual capability whereas i have the intellectual capability i have the capability to do the things but i do not have the will sir in that domain level in that last level you put acronym but the abbreviation is not matching that Yeah, uh, you are lost content. What is the meaning of the acronym? Then and there you put in the last two level. I'll show you that. Like I'll, uh, you. I'll come like down to that. Like I'll, I'll like come down. Time. I'll come down to that, sir. I am also happy with your session, sir. You are uh, your teaching is very nice. Thank you so much, sir. But uh, I never come to teach anything. I come to learn. Remember this, sir. But uh, in theory. you are not directly involved into the topic you are it takes a time to uh, this is the acronym i i used for the effective domain at the below revoc ha uh, the r r v o c r r v o c you are using responding evaluating organization and recurring uh, okay yeah okay okay so now understand yeah. for your subject for your subject in semester question are you used the three domain of different levels yes 
definitely yes and to be able to use that you must have that very deep you know we we underwent this taxonomy in two weeks time there were five six weeks spent by my teachers i told you by professor malhotra professor krishna murthy professor dhi professor rajamani and for two weeks we were deliberating like anything and after two weeks we were given a workshop to put it in our subject areas also and that is where uh, you know that that cannot be done on a one and a half hours